So what do you think, Ultra Ball? Do you think the format's in a good place? I'm, I'm, I'm going to take that as a no. He thinks the format is in a really dog shit place. I personally think it's not in that bad of a place. So you know what this means? This means that you're stupid. You're getting on out the house. And uh, he ain't going to catch me no Pokemans. And uh, he probably won't ever catch me a girlfriend either. So, your boy's single, ladies. Can we uh, can we maybe go to game two? I'll drop Mystic Mind on you game one. No? Okay. I'll I'll show myself out. Thank you all so much for the support, by the way. 750 subscribers. Let's go. Hopefully you found that intro hilarious. And if you did, let me know by showing me and the Ultra Ball some good old love. Because we are sitting at 750 fucking subscribers. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Thank you all so much for the support. It has been absolutely incredible. Be sure to destroy that like button, bell, and the subscribe button. Share the videos all over the interwebs with your cat, your dog, your mama, your sister, your brother, so that we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. So I wanted to just offer a chill, sit back and relax Yu-Gi-Oh! video, just discussing some things about the game that I've noticed from just playtesting online, going to locals, talking with friends, things like that. And... One of the biggest things right now that I think is on a lot of people's minds is, is Tactical Masters going to get delayed? Because at the moment, it still says on Konami's website that it's being released on 7-1, so the beginning of next month. And I think it actually comes out for OTS stores at like the end of this month on like the 28th or 29th. However, Robbie Cole from like other distributors and OTS stores, things like that, they're saying that it's going to be delayed to line up with what is going on in Europe. And it really sucks because what people need to keep in mind about this set is, yeah, we're getting Mr. Runes, but we're also getting the Labyrinth archetype, which you can play in Mr. Runes, you can play in like a lot of different things. We were going to have that for Nats this year, but if it gets delayed, now we won't. And that's really interesting because if it ends up getting delayed to the eighth month of the year, whatever that is, I can't remember what that is off the top of my head. Then on 8-1, we get Power of the Elements. And then at the end of that month, we get Tactical Masters. <laughs> so for me, blowing money on a case, instead of me spending money on a Tactical Masters case in one month and then the next month hitting up Power of the Elements, it's going to be like back to back. That's going to be insane. Also, you better believe that we're going to be doing an opening on the channel for both of those sets. So be sure that you're subscribed and have notifications on so that you can be well informed about that. Um, in other news, though, I uh, went to Locals today. I saw an old buddy of mine, Sean, shout out to Tuner928, really good friend of mine. It was great seeing you, bro. And um, also, you know, people people are really happy with where the meta is, even with Tactical Masters getting delayed. Um, I was actually talking with a friend of mine that works at my locals that I went to today. He doesn't know anything about the set getting delayed, um, whether that's all he can tell me or he just genuinely doesn't know is, you know, another thing in of itself. Um, obviously I don't want to get my friend in any trouble either. Um, but from what I can tell, going to locals and things and talking with players, people seem, at least in my circle, seem like they're really happy with this format. I mean, we've got change of heart back. We may see change of heart as an ultimate rare in OTS 19. We haven't had another OTS pack for a while. If you think about it, OTS pack 18 has been the thing for a while. Um, so if they don't release change of heart as an ultimate rare, you damn well better believe it's at least going to be a super. And I think the more that we kind of sit back and look at OTS Pack 18 and how long we've been sitting on it, yeah, I think that we are going to see Change of Heart as an ultimate rare in the next OTS Pack. I mean, it's a way to get butts in seats during the summertime instead of, you know, traveling to go see your grandparents. You know what I mean? Like, why do that? You could risk it for the biscuit and go and get an OTS pack and play in a tournament. Now, I'm not saying everybody's obviously going to go play Yu-Gi-Oh! instead of seeing his family. It's a joke, but obviously you get my point. Um, and it's a great way, too, for people that don't like Master Duel, like myself, as we call it on the channel, Master Shits, because until it's actually a good game, I'm going to keep on calling it Master Shits. It gives those players a chance to say, hey, change of heart is back in the game. Let me go and enter in a tournament probably get the ass beat because you know that's how we do it um but hey i pulled an ultimate rare change of heart like there you go and if not you just get it on the secondary market for a couple hundred bucks and i think that that's really 
something cool to look forward to, especially when we have product delays of side sets and things. I will say that it's nice to not have the product delays for core sets like Power of the Elements. Could you imagine if Power of the Elements got delayed? So we get tier elements delayed, we get splite delayed, we get the new Neospatian support delayed. Man, I'm, thank God that's not happening. I'm so excited for Power of the Elements. Power of the Elements is gonna be such an insane set for Yu-Gi-Oh! Like this will be, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's going to be our next Burst of Destiny set because Burst of Destiny really pushed forward what the meta was going to be. Um, you know, before Burst of Destiny, we had some decks in the meta and whatever. And then once that came out, it's like you got Flunder, you had uh, Branded even before the Structure deck, you had Sword Soul, like you had all these things. And I think Power of the Elements is going to do the same thing in a similar regard. I don't think it's going to be duelist alliance level heavy but i still think we are going to see a huge shakeup in the meta i mean shit look at how much innovation people are doing now with the branded cards you know you got branded eldritch branded toasters branded refrigerators like you, you got everything running branded i think we're going to see a similar thing with power of the elements whether it's you know warrior toolbox using more neospatian cards uh with infernobles or something or you know splite being thrown and everything you can play splite with fucking evil twins like what? <laughs> so I think that that's something that we really need to keep in mind. Also, little side note, something that I heard today from uh, my friend who we spoke earlier about working at our card shop, uh, he mentioned something interesting about what Jeff Leonard is apparently doing now with Mystic Mind, and he's playing Sales Ban. Now, this is really interesting because when you look at the, the wording of Sales Ban, right, and you look at Mystic Mind, a light bulb goes off in your head. You activate Mystic Mind, you activate Sales Ban, you declare Mystic Mind. Now, even if you go first and don't have Field Barrier, Mystic Mind can't trigger its activation effect to pop itself at the end of the turn because Sales Ban is in effect. So you're locked out of that card's activations for the rest of the game. But it's a continuous effect on the field when you play it. So if you want even more cheesiness to your cheese on top of trolliness cheese, play Mystic Mind, play Sales Ban, call Mystic Mind, the opponent or you, but why would it ever be you, has to manually out the Mystic Mind with a Cosmic Cyclone or something because it's not going to pop itself at the end of the turn. So you go first, you play the Mystic Mind sales ban, call that. Now, what, what's the opponent going to do? They're just not going to play any monsters, they just let you play Cauldron? And you may think, well, Avery, that's, that's idiotic. Why would you lock yourself into one Mystic Mind for the rest of the game? Well, because if the opponent can out the Mystic Mind, they're going to whoop your ass anyway. So why not? You still play three copies of Mystic Mind and three sales ban, apparently. So... You just do that and then you go off to the races. Is it good? I don't know. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind. Um, so do with that info what you will. Um, but I ended up playing Brandon Eldritch today and we went undefeated and got a draw in the last round. Shout out to uh, my buddy John who uh, was playing Ponder Patrol. I still don't know what that deck even fucking does. But you know what? It's a solid rogue deck and it's, it's bonkers. Like it's, it's actually really cool. The kind of stuff that that deck can do. Um, but I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh is in a really good place right now. And I feel that we are on a solid trajectory with our balance that we have right now, especially with Sky Strikers winning the YCS with triple demise and triple, uh, mystic mind. I think we're on a solid trajectory to not only get mystic mind banned, hopefully, or at least get it knocked down to one copy, but we are also just in a healthy format right now. There's a lot of different decks that you can play and see success with, you know, with or without an adventure engine. You can play pure Eldritch. That doesn't run the adventure engine. You can play Flunderies, which if you, even if you don't have Prosperities, you can still play Extraf. It's a very good budget deck. And Rises just got reprinted, so you have no reason to not be able to afford that deck. So, guys... Let me know down in the comments, what do you think about modern Yu-Gi-Oh right now? You know, obviously there are people who are going to say, I'm just going to stick with Master Duel or I'm going to stick with Duel Links. You know, I don't want to play the modern game, blah, 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 blah. I've seen that in my comment section where, you know, one guy even said, I'm just sticking with the World Championship and Tag Force games. And I, I can't blame any of you guys. I really can't because, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh is not for everybody, especially when you have a game state that is build my board. And I think really the game has been in a build my board scenario, I would argue ever since 2013 Dragon Rulers, you know, dropping out Draco Sacks and big ass dragons and just not giving a shit. Like it's, 
it's kind of sad in a way because now you're no longer playing these control aspect chess type of games unless you're playing a deck like Eldritch where it's basically a game of chess with the opponent and resource management. Um, but majority of the decks right now are build my board decks. So guys, please let me know down in the comments. Do you like these type of discussion videos? I was going to make this into a podcast episode why I play New Vegas, but I'm so tired from playing locals today for like three hours. I'm just, I'm ready to go to bed, but I wanted to get a video posted for you, especially for all the new subscribers um, so that I can have some content up for you to enjoy. Also, be sure and go check out the new retrospective episode. It's got about 30 views right now, so I'd really appreciate some love on that. It's Pepe format. Really good, and we have some fun with it. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.